Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 9th. First up, this was sent in by Pseudo GJ. That's my friend Gary. This is from Cena Bluetooth. They make a lot of accessories for motorcycles, especially Bluetooth headsets and stuff like that. They have just come out with an accessory backpack for a GoPro camera that turns it into a Bluetooth transmitter and receiver so that you can actually use the Bluetooth function as a remote microphone. A really great idea, except the one thing, I'll put up the picture of this, and uh, what really makes me think that this may have a problem is they have this little side dongle off to the side, as you can see. So even if you get the extended back for the camera, I think that could be a problem as far as if you want to use this camera for any kind of a waterproof housing or anything like that. I just don't see how it's going to work, and I see nowhere where they're advertising that they make a modified uh, waterproof or water resistant case to go over it. Uh, one good thing though is if I actually uh, I checked into their new releases and what's coming out and I guess uh, sometime in 2014 they're coming out with one of my ideas. I always thought it'd be good for GoPro to make a side lens on their camera or else have the lens so it could flip around so you could put the camera sideways for less wind resistance. If you look at the design and I'll put that up of what Cena is coming out with it looks to be almost exactly the same thing and if the Bluetooth remote microphone is built into the function of this. Uh, this may be the one last thing that, uh, as moto vloggers, we've been asking the cameras to take care of for a long time, and maybe seen as the one that has nailed it. So, if I get any more updates on it, I will let you know. There's no price on that. The price on the backpack, which they say is available now, but I still didn't see it in the catalog. You can contact their. Uh, there's links to contact the customer service, but they say it's a, a recommended retail price of $99 for the the backpack. Uh, the camera we'll still have to wait for for 2014. Next up, from my friend Bill, BC65925. Fuel cells may end up uh, powering the servers. Uh, Microsoft researchers looked into the uh, maybe possibly using in the future server uh, fuel cells to power server farms. And they said uh, with, uh, with their calculations, it could give uh, a 20% savings in, uh, in cost and uh, carbon, uh, the amount of carbon uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cutting the carbon you know, output and stuff like that that uh, uh, factories are looking to do now, not, uh, not putting carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Um, one thing they do talk about that uh, may be a problem with using fuel cells in the future is the world production total of fuel cells, and I didn't know this until I read the article, but the world production is 25,000 units. That's not very much at all. So if all of a sudden you had uh, people like Google and Microsoft and other people that run a lot of server farms make a huge demand on the productions uh, where it's not really the production capacity isn't there yet. You can see the price of fuel cells really skyrocket for a while now. They would also tend to drop back if the demand kept up. Uh, one thing I'm always interested in myself is ever since the uh, days I was a kid reading popular mechanics and popular science, they were constantly talking about the fact that fuel cells could be used sometime in the future for powering our homes and then we wouldn't need to be connected to the electric grid. You would just basically connect it up to a propane tank or connect it up to your natural gas supply. And at present, we have a very abundant supply and natural gas is relatively inexpensive uh, right now. Uh, one problem with that is um, if everybody does go to fuel cells, then natural gas obviously is going to go up in demand and going to go up in price. Uh, the other thing I look at too as a consumer is if my electric bill is running about 100 a month, which is basically what my electric is running now, that's 1200 a year, 12000 for 10 years. If I install the fuel cell with the price, the installation, and the natural gas to run it, at the end of 10 years, am I going to spend significantly less than $12,000, which I would cost me anyway, paying month to month and having myself hooked up to the electric grid. So uh, they would have to get the price down quite significantly. And I'd say for the average person, it'd have to be way less than a 10-year payback because I think a lot of people buy a house and they're not planning on still being in that house even five, seven years down the future. So you got to kind of have your pay, uh, your payback times really uh, increase a lot. As usual, all the articles I'm talking about, the links will be down in the description below. Check them out. This next one's from Christine, AZ Wacko's wife, and this is from AP.org. They've discovered an asteroid in the circling in orbit between Jupiter and Mars, and it's really unusual because it has six tails, and the Hubble, uh, the Hubble telescope was what discovered it, and uh, they think it's, a, uh, it's broken off maybe 200 million years ago. I don't know how exactly. I know they're, they're real accurate in some calculations, but they said this 
broke off of a larger chunk of asteroid maybe 200 million years ago and that's why it's behaving so strangely uh, spinning around and spewing out these six different tails um, that I would kind of know about what kind of calculations they do now I know they can be real accurate in orbitals and stuff like that and calculate that a, an asteroid's coming back around like maybe say 70 100 years into the future and they seem to be very accurate with that but yeah somehow uh, they did come up with the fact that this comes from a 200 million year old bigger asteroid but that's kind of cool and uh, yeah, check out the article and check out the pictures uh, so you see a little bit better quality pictures than what I'm able to put on my video. Um, this is uh, more about home printing now. Uh, printers for uh, printing plastic parts and stuff like that are getting relatively cheap and now people are even buying them and using them quite a bit. But this comes from CNN.com. Solid Concepts, a specialty manufacturing company, said in a blog post it has fired more than 50 rounds from a Model 1911 style gun they've printed using a metal printer that's very similar to the plastic type of printers. Uh, uh, more doing it just as a proof of concept that they could do it. This gun, uh, and they have video of it too, I saw the video of it, and this gun is shot from 30 yards and it seems to be fairly accurate. It's a nice functional model 1911. Uh, people may be freaking out saying, okay, well, are people going to start buying these printers and printing uh, handguns and machine guns and stuff like that? Uh, not right away, I'd say, because uh, like they talk about here, this thing costs a minor fortune, and what this company wants to use this for is not the manufacturer of guns themselves, but parts for guns. So they just wanted to prove the fact that they could print out parts accurate enough to put together a functioning gun. Now, I know as kind of like a, an amateur gunsmith myself and working on my own guns and stuff like that, since they've come out with the computerized CNN parts, uh, using uh, computer manufacturing. Some of the tolerances are so tight on those, um, you have to do very little handwork sometimes fitting replacement parts to a gun anymore. It's it's uh, pretty good. I've had many parts that say they may require uh, hand fitting. I've dropped them into the gun and they fit so perfect they haven't even needed any hand fitting. So um, that's just what technology can do. And like anything else, this is what they're talking about now and how unaffordable it is, just like they were talking about plastic printers. But uh, no telling 10 years from now. I mean, maybe a printer that can print metal parts will be in the reach of, of your average person. And then, I don't know, that's probably going to be a concern to the politicians wanting to restrict people being able to do stuff. Okay, next up, um, this is Tom's doing an update for uh, what I had last week on the TDD report. I had talked about the uh, USS Zumwalt, the new class of stealth and high technology ships. Well, it's nice to have somebody do a perspective that has a little bit of experience with ships and actually experience in the Navy. So I asked Tom to make me this short video of his take on the new Zumwalt class ships. Take it away, Tom. All right, Chuck, thanks. Uh, just introducing the uh, new United States Navy destroyer. It's a Zumwalt class, and it's radically different. It has a tumble hole design which is actually you know how you normally see a hole that's shaped like that this one is shaped like this and uh, they're doing a hell of a lot of design on this it's going to have uh, rail guns it's going to have electric drive um, they're going to incorporate lasers into it so I encourage you to watch the videos that Chuck puts in the links yeah, take a look at these uh, videos that Chuck put in the links down below. And uh, exciting times in the United States Navy. Sometimes I miss it. 600 feet long. And they're actually even taking crew consideration, crew comfort consideration into it. Um, it's going to have half the manning that uh, the current destroyers have, but uh, really it's, it's an awesome deal. All right, Chuck, back to you. Thanks, Tom. And uh, last up, this is kind of related to the uh, technology and the stealth ships and stuff like that. If you're uh, familiar with the SR-71 Blackbird, that was a spy plane that flew at three times uh, the speed of sound at Mach 3 and was retired in 1999. Um, I also did an article that uh, one of the planes was taken over by NASA and actually uh, used for research purposes after that. But basically as far as anything uh, military or anything like that, it was done in 1999. Well, now they're coming up with SR-72, calling it the Son of Blackbird. 
and this thing um, will not only fly at twice the speed, which is six times the speed of sound, but it will also be weapons equipped too. The uh, SR-71 Blackbird was totally a surveillance craft, had no ability to defend itself. Its only defense was the fact it could fly at 80,000 feet and maybe even higher. Some of it was classified. I think even to this day some of it's classified, but um, supposedly it could fly so high that nothing could even touch it or uh, be used to as a weapon against it. Well, this one will have built-in weapons. The first test model, I guess, um, one of the first test models is actually going to be a manned aircraft. It's not going to be the one that's put in service, but they are going to have, have actually one that's uh, flown by a human being as a test craft, and uh, that's pretty cool. I was thinking myself, now just, this is just another, I like to add my thoughts to these articles, and this was not something they even talked about, but if you have an airplane going six times the speed of sound, you could drop a ball bearing, a one-inch ball bearing, out of this airplane, and it's already traveling at twice the speed of a bullet out of a 30 6 rifle. So you could do quite a bit of damage that way, too. I'm thinking if you uh, didn't even want to bother with missiles and just wanted to make it inexpensive, you could probably just uh, pack a whole bunch of ball bearings or something in it and just have it fly over the target and drop those. And if they're traveling at 6,000 feet per second plus, they're going to take out anything but a very super hardened target anyway and be pretty devastating. Um, the main thing behind the speed of this too is they were saying if they, uh, if it was still going at three times the speed of sound it could enter airspace of a hostile country and it would give them time to be able to hide their weapons or um, hide their missile launchers. Um, they claim this one with most countries it flies so fast that by the time it crossed the border and was detected they would not have enough time to uh, hide their missile launchers and their anti-aircraft capability so it would be able to attack and actually destroy them before they could be hidden. So. That's the main thing uh, about this uh, about this thing being able to fly so fast. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.